This video will introduce you to basic select by attribute operations using ArcGIS Pro. The most basic type of selection within ArcGIS Pro is to use the interactive selection tool. In this example, I've loaded in a feature class representing census block groups. I can click on an individual polygon to select it, or by holding down the shift key, I can select multiple polygons. At any time, I can open up the attribute table and toggle on and off the selected features. For this selection, you can see that I've got 8 of 522 polygons selected. I can also switch the selection, which inverts the selection so that the unselected polygons are now selected and the selected polygons become deselected. I also have the option to zoom in to the selected polygons. And then finally, when I'm done, I can clear the selection so that no polygons are currently selected. Other interactive selection options allow you to draw a polygon, a circle, a lasso, or a line, and select all those features that intersect what you have just drawn. In addition to opening up the attribute table, you can click on the attributes button to see a list of the selected attributes. You can scroll down through the list to highlight the individual polygons and see their associated attributes. Just like selecting a polygon selects the associated record in the attribute table, Opening up the attribute table and selecting a record also selects the associated polygon. In this example, I'm sorting my polygon attributes by the field that represents total population within each census block group. I'm then interactively selecting the record, and you can see that the associated polygon is also selected within the map. By right-clicking on a field and choosing statistics, I can pull up the distribution of that field as long as it's numerical data. Selecting a record in the attribute table or a polygon in the layer will highlight the appropriate data point in the distribution chart. Going into the chart properties gives me the ability to access additional information about my data, such as the mean, median, standard deviation, and so forth. The Select by Attributes tool gives me a way to use SQL or Structured Query Language to select records from my table or feature class. In this example, I'm entering a simple SQL phrase to select all the block groups that have a population, that's the P0030001 field, that is greater than 1000. This is a three-step process in that I first develop the expression, I then add the expression, and then I'm going to run the expression. It's also a good idea to check the expression just to make sure that it's valid. Once I've executed the Select by Attribute tool, you can see that all the polygons with populations greater than 1,000 have been highlighted. Just as with the interactive selection method, when I open up my attribute table, I see that the associated records for each selected polygon are also selected. Just as before, I can zoom to, switch, and clear the selection. I can also create a new layer that represents only those polygons included in the selection by right-clicking on my existing layer, going to Selection, and then choosing Make Layer from Selected Feature. Once I've created that selection, I can go in and adjust its symbology, do additional selections off of it, or use it for downstream geoprocessing tasks. Because I've created a separate layer from this selection, I can go and clear my selection and now symbolize that layer that I created from the selection differently than my original feature class. Opening up the attribute table of that new layer I created shows that it's simply a subset of the original feature class. It contains fewer polygons and thus fewer records. Nevertheless, for each one of those records that still exists, all the associate attributes remain. It's important to understand that a layer isn't a new feature class. 
If we go in and look at the properties, we see that it still points to the original feature class dataset. The way I like to think of it is that it's a virtual subset. Now let's look at an example in which I'd like to find those block groups with below average population and below average household size. First, I'm going to develop distribution charts for both the population and household size attributes. Once I've noted those mean values, I'm going to move over and open the Select by Attributes tool. I'm developing a new selection, but I'm going to have two clauses this time. The first clause is going to find those census block groups with a population below the average, which is approximately 1,200. The second clause is focused on those block groups that have a household size below the average of 2.3. You'll notice that I'm using the AND operator as opposed to the OR operator, which means both of these criteria must be true in order for the selection to be returned. Thus, only those census block groups that have a below average population AND a below average household size will be selected. Just as I did before, I'm going to create a new layer from this selection and then symbolize it differently from the original layer. This video showed you how to carry out basic selection tasks, both using interactive selection functionality and the Select by Attributes tool.